Alright everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Space Quest 2 or Space Quest Chapter 2, Vohal's Revenge. I think that's how you say it, I honestly have no idea. And I'm so, so excited to be back in Space Quest after playing the first game. Um, that was a real adventure, we died over 50 times, I got absolutely brutalised by the game. But... I didn't get enough punishment, clearly, because I'm coming back for the second one, and I can't wait to see how the story continues. I've already can tell that the, the music and stuff has had a bit of an overhaul, so I'm really excited to see what else has changed. So, here we go. Welcome aboard XOS4. To log on for duty, please enter your name below up to 18 characters. I think this time we're going to go with um, the actual character's name, Roger Wilco. So, let's do it. Orbital Station 4 is one of many orbiting Xenon, your home planet. It is a transfer point for travellers seeking transportation to the various planets in the Ernon system. As we begin this chapter of our story, we find you, Roger Wilco, Ace Janitor, doing what you do best. Sweeping! <laughs> Alright, here we go, we've got our mop. It's all good. Is it a mop or is it a broom? I don't know. We can't... A beep emanates from your wristwatch. You release your grip on the broom. It's a broom. Okay. Well, bye bye broom. <laughs> the broom floats away, never to be used again. That makes the third one this week. Wait till your boss finds out. So yeah, we were heroes and now we're back to being janitors again. So here we go. Similar sort of thing to, I guess, Space Quest 1 with throwing us straight into the action. Hopefully no self-destructs that I'm not aware of at the start of this one. Uh... Can we go this way, or is this going to kill us? I get the feeling... Yep. Due to an obvious lack of common sense, you have stepped off the edge, lost your magnetic grip on the ship, and drifted to your death. Way to go, Wingnut. Once again, you've demonstrated your inability to sustain life. You quickly glance around the room to see if anyone saw you blow it. Thank you for playing Space Quest 2. Roger Wilco, you've been swell to watch. Have a nice day. Fantastic. We're already dead. Uh, and we didn't save, did we? So we're going to have to restart and do it like this again. That will also remind me to save often. So death one is already on. I had a feeling that might happen if we went that way, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> it begins again, guys. And honestly, I'm pretty excited about it. So um, let's just call this uh, start, I guess. And we'll uh, look around. You're working outside Xenon Orbital Station 4. This area hasn't been completed yet. You have been sent out here to remove construction debris and space dust. Uh, okay, how the hell do we get back inside? Uh, I don't actually see... Oh, okay, yep. Yeah, right, we go in through the top, do we? Because, of course... No gravity, so we're using, like, magnetic boots. Quite clever. Something that wasn't in the previous one. I like it already. And we got score one of 250. Nice. We're on the board, guys. We're on the board. Right. Where are we now? Stand by for decontamination. I mean, I'm a little surprised that you can't die by staying in the decontamination booth for too long or something. Uh, look around. This is the airlock chamber. From here, you can gain extra vehicular access. Spare suits hang on the back wall. Some lockers are mounted on the side wall. Right, okay. So, uh, let's have a look at these suits. You're dressed in the standard issue excursion garment. Uh, do I have to do look spare suits? I don't understand spare. Okay. Uh, what's this? Is is this our clothes? It looks kind of like clothes. You're dressed in this... Uh, right. Get suit. Yeah, there we go. Okay. We're back in our normal clothes. Yes. Right. Let's have a look in these lockers then. Uh, look lockers. The lockers are all closed. There is nothing too interesting about them. Okay, so... Nothing that we need to do there then, I guess. I mean, graphically it looks very similar, um, which is what I was expecting. But yeah, it's pretty cool to be back in this game. I'm, I'm really excited. I, I, despite the amount of times we died, I really enjoyed the first one. Wow. Look at this. Oh. 
I skipped something there. He then orders the transportation officer to send you d directly to the shuttle bay and nowhere else until the job has been completed. Right, so you're in the transportation control room of the orbital station. The room is abuzz with activity as technicians monitor XOS4 operations. A pneumatic transport tube is accessible from the walkway above. Oh yeah, I can see it. Uh, do we need to talk to any of these people or not? I'm guessing probably not. Do we, do we get on here? Yep, yeah, okay. So let's head up here. We'll go across. And I guess we go into the transport tube then. Seems like the only logical place to go. Right. Oh, yeah, here we go. Where are we now? Look around. You are in the orbital station shuttle bay. A shuttle fresh from a passenger drop-off on Xenon is refueling for its next trip. A pneumatic transport tube is accessible from the walkway. A refueler replenishes the shuttle's supply. Okay, so we can either get back in or we can go and look at this, I'm guessing. So, uh, let's head down here and see what this is all about. It looks like we might be able to go off to the right as well. I, I don't know. Uh, do you know what? It feels like about time to save, just in case we electrocute ourselves or something. You never know. Alright, let's uh, look at hose, I guess. Nothing special about the hose. It merely provides a means of routing fuel from the refueler to the vessel. Uh, can we look at the vessel? The shuttlecraft is your standard 10-passenger short commute vehicle. It was primarily designed to ferry people and supplies between orbital stations, Xenon and other orbiting spacecraft. Okay. Uh, right, we can walk around this way. I wonder if we can get onto the shuttle. That might be something we can do. Ah, of course, I've forgotten. Game speed. There we go. Completely forgot about that. So, do you know what? Let's... Um, Let's save over Shuttle Bay again. You guys have probably already left comments because we're about 10 minutes in, I think. And you're probably going, Turian, use the game speed. In which case, leave your comments, don't delete them. Because you'll be absolutely right. Um, you, enter, you are surprised to find that the shuttle is not empty. There are two extremely ugly suckers walking towards you. Hey, what the... Your favourite expletive here. Pow! Thwack! Bink! Thud! Your protest is cut short as two interstellar ruffians proceed to thump you unconscious. Everything fades. Time passes. More time passes. A strange dream turns into the realisation that you are being shaken and talked to by a voice unfamiliar to you. A dull ache triggers a distant memory of a scuffle in which you were the focal point. Upon awakening from your forced rest, it becomes quite apparent that you aren't in Kansas uh, Xenon anymore. You find that you are being held upright and under physical restraint from both sides by, you guess, the galactic goons you met on the shuttle. As you try to struggle free, you notice that your hands are tied behind your back. As the eyes dial into focus, you make out an oddly disfigured being seated before you. Oh, spooky music. This is a bad guy, you can tell by the music. A sagging mass of flesh that appears to have been human at one time. Tubes and wires extend from his body, leading to machines which keep him alive. Suddenly, his visage stirs and he begins to speak. Well, well, did we have a nice nap? I thought we would have to resort to drastic measures to wake you. Oh well. Welcome to my humble fortress, Roger Wilco. The name's Vohol, Sludge Vohol. I was the genius behind the Star Generator when it was still in the concept stages. It was to be my ultimate war weapon until some sissy pants scientist <laughs> decided it would be better used saving lives rather than destroying them. What a waste of technology. Excuse me if I sound bitter. Anyway, you ruined my Sarian operation. I was going to use the Star Generator to make Xenon pay for what they did to me. They were going to know my wrath in a big way. You somehow managed to change all that. Oh, I suppose I should have known better than to use those mental midget Sarians. <laughs> That's not the point, however. You are responsible and you shall play. Pay, not play. <laughs> Besides, I have another plan and you will not be around to foil it. I have devised a plan so horrible, so frightening, so diabolical that no one will be able to stop me. Observe my latest creation. What is that? I intend to infest your planet with thousands of these genetically engineered door-to-door -door life insurance salesmen. I will at last reap 
Sweet revenge from the scientific community that mocks me. Not the door salesman. My plan was to kill you, but I've had a chance, change of heart. Ha ha ha. Get it? He peers down at the hoses protruding from his chest and connected to a life support system. Forgive me, I'm a kidder. I've decided I would get much more enjoyment watching you suffer. I love the way his head's popping up in there. My associates will escort you to the surface of Labion, where you will perform many painful hours of manual labour in my mines. Be seeing you. An injection renders you unconscious. Your drugged carcass is loaded onto a shuttle. Upon reviving, you look through the viewing port to see Vohal's massive asteroid fortress getting smaller. Wow, that was... Uh... So I don't know if there was more to explore before and we maybe shouldn't have got into the shuttle. I'm, I'm not sure, but it seems like we've hit a point of no return already. So we might we might be in trouble. Anyway, he, he has a pretty cool base, I won't lie, being in an asteroid. Here we go. After touching down on a giant landing platform, you are ushered to a hovercraft waiting to transport you to the mining site. Utter despair sets him. There's definitely way more story and things in this one compared to the first one. It's good. How long is this journey? Oh, oh god. Uh oh. Oh great, I suppose we're out of fuel. Way to go, Gorf Breath. Don't blame me, it was your turn to fill up. You're always forgetting to do it. Wait till the master finds out, you're in big trouble. Hey. Don't talk to me that way, you slime bucket. I filled it last time, dip. The argument between the two guards is cut short as gravity reasserts itself. I was going to say, how is it floating? Ooh, look at this place. Good thing that guard broke your fall. He doesn't look too happy about it, though. No, I mean, I guess he wouldn't. Right, let's look around. You seem to be in a rather exotic forest. The growth here is unlike anything you're used to. On the ground lies the wreckage of the hovercraft you crashed in. Nearby are the bodies of your former captors. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna save, but I saw something up at the back there. Uh, grassy planet, I guess. There's something sort of to the top right in the bushes. There was a little head that popped up. Um, so the guard appears to be less thick than you remember him. Many of his formerly contained body fluids seem to be at large. Oh god. Can we search the body? You search grotesque body and find a small thing magnetic card. It looks like a key card. You seem to recall seeing one somewhere in the past. Yeah, there was a key card before, wasn't there? And wasn't that the first thing we picked up before? Uh, okay. Look, magnetic card? I don't... Okay. Uh, that beeping is rather annoying. Anyway, let's look at the hovercraft. Oh, that, that didn't work for some reason. The hovercraft has been reduced to a mound of twisted wreckage. Everything that was straight is bent. Everything that was bent is bent. <laughs> there appear to be no salvageable parts. Alright, well, let's just, let's just search it in case, because you never know with these games, right? Everything inside is twisted, Kate. Okay, no. Uh, a button with a flashing light next to it. It seems to be emitting a high-pitched beep. Right. We'll call this key card. Oh, wait. Hang on. Get key card. Yeah, see, I forgot that you had to do that, didn't I? Uh, right. Key card. I forgot you have to actually, you, when you search things, you have to manually tell it to pick it up. It doesn't just pick it up. Right. So, um, the foliage here is much too dense for you to pass through. I might regret this, <coughs> but I'm going to push the button. You press the button, the light goes dark, and you no longer notice the high-pitched beep. Okay. I mean... Search grotesque body and find nothing. I mean, we, we got a point for, for doing that, so... I mean, it, it does kind of feel like we should have done that, I guess. So, I guess we'll call that beep stopped. And hope we don't 
die and haven't pressed the self-destruct or something. But actually, guys, we're out of time, so that's we're going to leave it for this first episode. Wow, it feels good to be playing Space Quest again. I'm really enjoying this one so far. I've got to say, it's um, very, very cool. Um, definitely seems like more thoughts gone into the story and things. It, it feels more immersive than the first game did, even though, you know, graphically and things, it's very similar. So I'm really excited to see where this goes, actually. There's a proper bad guy this time as well, rather than just bad guys. There's like a, a proper nemesis, and I, I quite like that. So, as always guys, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, and Terminally Nerdy for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. It really helps YouTube push this video out to more people who'd like to, to watch it and join our little community that we're building here. And I will see you all next time.